Good morning, everyone. Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 121, verses 1 to 8. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Let's all rise and sing a few songs together. Let's sing this song, Our God. Sing uh, what a beautiful name. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. You're hidden on glory in creation. Now Oh, 
Dear God, thank you that your name is truly beautiful. Your name is truly wonderful. And your name is truly powerful. We worship you today because you are a God who is worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Esther. Esther was the queen of Persia. Wait, what? Queen? Esther didn't become queen in the usual way. See, her father wasn't a king, and she wasn't from a noble family. It's just me and cousin Mordecai. In fact, Esther was Jewish. Many of God's people had been captured and brought to Babylon when their home, Judah, was conquered. Then Babylon was taken over by Persia. So Esther grew up in a land that wasn't her own. When Esther's parents died, her cousin Mordecai raised her as his very own daughter. Always remember what our scriptures say. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength. One day, a new king named Xerxes came to power in Persia. He was so impulsive that he actually fired his queen, Vashti, simply for refusing to show up at a wild party. She will never see me again. When Xerxes had finally calmed down, he had realized he now had no queen. I have no queen. He would have to find a new one. I must find a new one. So the king decided to hold a contest. He ordered his officials to gather the most beautiful young women in the land and put them through an entire year of beauty treatments. Esther was one of those girls chosen. Cousin Mordecai, what do I do? Don't tell anyone you're from a Jewish family. I have chosen my new queen. <clears throat> Drum roll. My new queen is Esther. Mm -hmm. Me? Assume the queenly royal crown. I might have to resize it. Just as Xerxes had so impulsively switched queens, he also promoted a royal official named Haman higher than all of the other nobles in the kingdom. Bow to me, you fools! Haman was delighted when all of the officials outside the palace bowed low before him. When he discovered that Mordecai refused to bow, he was enraged. You have to bow! Somebody make him bow! Haman was so angry, he made a plan to destroy not only Mordecai, but all the Jews in the land. He laid it out for the king. Your Majesty, these Jews live differently than everyone else. They don't obey your laws. Fiddlesticks, that's just wrong. Precisely, give the order to destroy them. Consider it done. Xerxes agreed to the terrible decree. Messengers took the letter all over the kingdom. Hear ye, hear ye. On the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, all Jews are to be killed. Hear ye, hear ye. When Mordecai and the other Jews discovered the horrible news, they dressed in rough clothing and wept bitterly. Mordecai sent a message to Esther in the palace, telling her what Haman had done. You must ask the king to save our people. Esther was devastated. She sent a response to her cousin. No one can come before the king unless he sends for them. If I do it, I'll die, unless he reaches out his gold scepter to me. Mordecai sent his answer right back. You may not escape, even though you're a queen. Who knows? It's possible that you became queen for just a time like this. He's right. Here, tell this to Mordecai. Gather all the Jews. Don't eat anything for three days. I and my servants will fast too. Then I'll go to the king. Esther faced an impossible dilemma, but she took three days to prepare her heart and her mind. 
Bring my most beautiful royal robes. Heart racing, Esther entered the throne room. Across the long hall, she saw the king seated high on the throne. Breathless, she waited for him to see her. Please, please, please. The king looked up, his dark eyes locked on Esther's face. And then he smiled. He reached out his golden scepter. Thank God. What is it, Queen Esther? I'll give you anything, up to half my kingdom. Esther could have made her request right away, but she knew she would have a better chance if she made the king curious. King Xerxes, if it pleases you, come to a feast I prepared today. Oh, and bring Haman. Consider it done. Esther created an elaborate feast for the king and his number two official. <laughs> Look at me, you peasants, invited to the queen's banquet. At the meal, King Xerxes once again tried to discover what Esther wanted. I'll give you anything, up to half my kingdom. Once again, Esther held her ground and waited for the perfect moment. I'd like you and Haman to come to another feast tomorrow. Then I'll answer your question. The king agreed, and Haman spent the whole evening bragging to all of his friends. You guys, the queen thinks I am the bum. <laughs> But the second feast was a different story. As before, Esther prepared an incredible meal. Both Haman and the king were quick to dig in. What do you want me to do for you? I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Esther took a deep breath. Something told her this was the right moment. Your majesty, let me live. Please spare my people. We have been sold to be destroyed. Haman paled and choked on his fillet, but the king's face flushed red with rage. Who is the man who has dared to do such a thing? Esther turned her gaze on Haman. Haman is the one. In a panic, Haman threw himself at the queen. Totally didn't mean it. Please, please, please let me live. You dare attack the queen? Take him away. That very night, Haman was killed, and the king created a new order that would allow the Jews to be saved. We will celebrate this day with great joy. God had given Esther a surprising position in a foreign nation, and when the time was right, she would use all she had been given to save her people. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the CM Worship for uh, August the 16th, uh, 2020. We are glad that you could join us today, and uh, we hope that you're enjoying the last few uh, weeks of your summer. Well, today we watched a Bible video about Esther and how Esther became the queen. Remember, Esther was not born into a royal family, but she was chosen by the, the king to replace Queen Vashti, uh, who refused to come when the king had beckoned her to come. So the king uh, was probably sitting in his palace wondering, who is going to be my next queen? And who will win this contest that he had set up to find his, uh, his next uh, six, uh, the successor for the queen? Well, um, Mordecai uh, was the uh, caretaker for Esther and uh, was also her cousin. But Mordecai raised Esther to be like his own daughter. So. Um, Mordecai once had a conversation with his, uh, his cousin and asked, would you like to uh, enter into this contest and, and uh, become the next queen? So Esther agreed, and so she went to uh, the, uh, the, the place in uh, Susa to prepare uh, to go in, in front of the, of the king. Haggai, the eunuch uh, in charge of the woman, uh, actually really liked Esther. And once Haggai met Esther, he really took an interest in her. Uh, he treated her very kindly. He uh, quickly ordered a special menu for her and provided her with many beauty treatments. Also, uh, she assi he assigned seven maids chosen specially from the king's palace, and he moved her to the best place in the harem, or in, in the place where all the women were staying. 
So for the next 12 months, Esther uh, went through a series of spa treatments. Okay, so six months, uh, she had spa treatments of oil of myrrh, and then six more months, she had spa treatments of special perfumes and ointments. So after one whole year, 12 months of beauty treatments, Esther was ready to go and see the king. Esther asked for nothing in, uh, when she went into the king's presence. She was admired by everyone that, who saw her and, and got to know her. Uh, but because she was a Jew, Mordecai warned her not to tell people about her identity. So she kept that secret. It was like she was an under, undercover Jewish agent in the, in the king's palace. So what was the king's reaction when Esther uh, came to see her? As soon as the king saw her, he loved her more than any other, other woman. And immediately uh, he put a crown on her head and made her queen. He threw a big banquet for her in Esther's honor and gave generous gifts to all, all the guests. Uh, so Esther's beauty had won, helped her win this contest as the queen of Persia. And Esther's life would never be the same again. So Esther was not only a woman who was very, very beautiful, but she was also a woman who was very courageous. As soon as she found out that um, Haman and King Xerxes had written a decree that, that had said that all the Jews, young and old, uh, women and children, would, would be killed in one day, Esther was devastated and she knew she had to do something. Mordecai challenged her uh, by, by saying these words to her. He said, don't think for a moment that you will escape there in the palace where all the other Jews will be killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. What more, who can say, but you have been elevated in the palace for such a time as this. Esther knew what she had to do. She asked Mordecai and all the Jews to pray for her and to fast for three days. And after three days, Esther would go uh, and see the king, even if it meant risking her life. She knew that the only way that her life would be saved is if the king held out his golden scepter towards her. But she, she had no idea whether the king would show her mercy or not. In Esther's own words, this is what uh, she told her uncle Mordecai. She said, I will go and see the king. If I must die, then I am willing to die. That shows great courage. D-Day finally arrives and Esther approaches the king's chambers and asks the guards to open the door. And much to her surprise, the king extends the golden scepter to her and Esther's life is spared. Phew. She has another day to live. So rather than telling the king right at that moment that, uh, of what she wanted, Esther decided to uh, invoke his curiosity. So what she did is she invites Haman and the king uh, to a dinner banquet instead. Now King Xerxes is curious and wants to know what Esther wants. So he attends the banquet with Haman that very evening. Haman is overjoyed that he has this special privilege of dining with the king and the queen. And he goes home and tells his wife, so excited about this special invitation that he has received. He has no idea what is coming. The king asks Esther again, what is it that you want, Esther? I will give up to half the kingdom to you. Whatever you want, just tell me what it is. But Esther, at this moment, uses her wisdom and is able to discern that this is not the right time for her to share her request with the king. So she invites Haman and the king to another banquet on the next day. So once again, Haman and the king show up and the king asks her the same question. What is it that you want, Esther? Up to half the kingdom I will give to you. And Queen Esther at this moment knows that this moment is right. And she puts on her saddest face and, and says, uh, guess what, king? There's somebody in, in this uh, palace that is, is trying to kill me and my people. And at this moment, the king starts getting very angry and starts saying, who is this person? Who is this person who wants to kill you and your people? 
Tell me right now, who is it? And at that moment, uh, Queen Esther points to Haman, and Haman knows he is in big trouble. He begs the queen for mercy by falling on the queen's feet and grabbing her robe. And, but the king thinks that Haman is attacking Queen Esther and sentenced him to death. So after Haman dies, the queen tries to, to get the uh, king to uh, change the decree uh, to try to save the Jewish people. But unfortunately, the king cannot break uh, the law that he had signed and also sealed with his ring. So the king comes up with a brilliant idea. He says, I'm going to write a new decree, and I'm going to uh, let the Jews defend themselves. If anybody attacks them, they have the authority and the ability to protect themselves. So in the end, the Jewish people, including Mordecai and Esther, are saved. So what can we learn about Esther in, in uh, th this story? First of all, we know that God used Esther, Esther's beauty, to put her in a position of influence in the palace. The second thing we know about Esther is that God used her courage to approach the king with her request, even though it meant risking her own life in order to do it. And finally, God used Esther's smarts, her discernment, her wisdom, to outsmart Haman through a series of dinners and being wise about when was the right time for her to bring her request to the king. So that was Esther's purpose. That was God's purpose for Esther in the palace, not just to be the queen of Persia, but also to be the one to save her people from extinction. So did you guys know that God created each one of us with a purpose as well. Uh, so what is purpose? Let's define, first of all, what it is. Purpose is doing something intentionally. Uh, purpose is setting up an object with an end in mind. Uh, purpose is something that will give your life some meaning. When we believe in Jesus um, as our Lord and Savior, God's purposes become our purposes. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says, We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and who have been called according to his purpose. And then in Philippians chapter 2, verse 11, uh, it says that it is God who works in us to will and to act according to his good purpose. So what are these verses telling us? The verses are telling us that God will work in us to fulfill uh, his purposes for our life. So how does this work? So let's say for younger children, uh, maybe your purpose is really just to be a good brother or sister to, in your family, or to be a good son or daughter to your mom and dad. Oh, for older kids, maybe it is to be a good friend to your friends at school, or to befriend somebody who is uh, lonely or doesn't have friends. So uh, no, no matter what your purpose is, God has a purpose for each one of us. And whatever we decide to do, and whatever it is that is our purpose, we should do it with all of our hearts and for the glory of God. In 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31 it says, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Did you guys know that the chief goal uh, uh, for us as Christians is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever? We can worship God uh, by praising Him for who He is. We can worship him by singing songs to him in virtual camp, summer camp, or playing uh, worship music on our instruments or listening to it in our spare time. We, we can worship God by uh, watching the CM video and applying God's word into our life. These are all acts of worship that we can do um, so that we can uh, give God glory and we can worship the God who is worthy of our praise. Worship is our chief purpose as humans to do since we have been made in the image of God. We give God glory because he is the maker of heaven and earth. So let's read our Bible verse for this month. In uh, Psalm 143, verse 3, this is what it says. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. So this week, uh, I want to ask you a few questions uh, that you can ask yourself. First of all, am I worshiping God daily in my life? And what is distracting me from worshiping Him? 
Uh, second thing is, am I living out my life uh, for God's purpose or for my own? And the third question we can ask ourselves is this, uh, what can I do to worship God more uh, during the week? And what can I do to make God a priority in my life? Uh, boys and girls, you know that there is always room for us to learn how to worship God and to fulfill God's purpose. With God's help, we can worship the Lord um, and we can praise him for who he is. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you that you are a God who is um, a God who is worthy of our worship. Help us to find joy in worshiping you, whether it's at camp, whether it's at home, whether it's at school, or whether it's in creation. There are many ways that we can give you glory and we can give you praise. We pray that you would help us to find our purpose in what you want us to do and help us to do it to serve others and to, to serve you. Help us to be willing to use our gifts to, to uh, impact other people. And uh, when we give our gifts to you, Lord, we know that uh, you will multiply it just like you did with the five loaves and the two fishes in the miracle you performed when you were on this earth. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sing 这个疫情其实对大西洋的教会影响相当之大陆续来宣告所有教会的聚会 Gang 西亚教会失去了百分之三十的人去了参加其他教会好像一个宣教的旅程当中一个多伦多 
f i r m 嘅工作，我未必能夠去到 PI， 我未必能夠啊入到啊呢個 New Bond Street 嗰度。啊！嚟到去做嗰啲嘅方工作，所以請大家都嚟到祈禱，真係呢啲門可以開。誒、啊，有冇辦法？有冇途徑？啊、有啲嘅特許俾我可以、啊、過得到境、啊、入 P.I. 入呢個嘅啊，廖斌叔嚟到去支持呢啲方面嘅工作。喺八月頭嘅時候呢，啊、馬光輝牧師就從廖 market 宣道會，佢就、啊、搬遷去到 Mountain 嗰度。啊！然之後準備九月一號就喺 Mountain 啊，我哋環宣道會當中嚟到去上任啊，作 Mountain 環教會嘅牧師，所以我都好希望可以快啲能夠去到嗰度啊，嚟到去啊，同佢一齊嚟到去同工啊，嚟到去唔單止喺 Mountain 呢個地方，喺廖賓雪其他嘅地方，我哋繼續發展一啲環方個工作個嘅事情。咁亦都喺九月啊尾嘅時候咧。係會係呢個中秋節，所以我都準備喺中秋節期間之前嗰幾個禮拜，我希望能夠去到唔同嘅一啲嘅福音站、一啲環聚居嘅地方，要做到一啲啊中秋節嘅探訪或者福音嘅聚會。所以請大家都啊為呢啲事情嚟到祈禱啦！啊，求神俾平安，求神俾一個通達嘅路，可以真係能夠喺呢啲嘅。啊！省份喺呢啲嘅城市或者小鎮嗰度，能夠有呢個出入。大西洋嘅教會、大西洋嘅人，其實都啊比安省對啊疫情呢啲嘢更加緊張，因為佢哋嗰邊嘅醫療啊設施冇安省咁多，咁所以都啊為呢啲事情嚟祈禱。我哋好幾個教會都準備喺九月再開始翻有啲誒集。誒睇嘅聚會，但係然會有啲嘅網上嘅聚會，咁為呢啲安排都嚟到去禱告，所以請大家喺呢啲事情上面嚟到去紀念我哋，幫助我哋啊，然後再有其他嘅，我就同大家嚟到分享，多謝大家。Glory to God, who is able to do far beyond all that we can ask or imagine by His power that is at work within us. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, and see you next week.